Hey y'all, welcome to the GM's Lost Whiskey, the podcast meant to create a safe place for both GMs and players to just sit and talk everything tabletop role-playing games. And I'm League of Whiskey. Let's get started. Um, so yeah, I'm sure everybody's well aware that uh, we were not live last week. Um, in fact, we didn't even post a video last week because I... I was sick. It was awful. So it was it was a little awkward for us, um, but we appreciate everybody's patience, um, and we kind of wanted to do something a little bit different uh, than our past few episodes. We're pretty early on in episodes, so doing something different is everything is different at this point. Yeah, we're trying something new. Um, you know, it's been a while with Lost traveling, me being sick, uh, since we've got to sit, gotten to sit down and just have one of our regular DM or GM conversations, um, talk about the state of our campaigns, talk about uh, things that we kind of need help with in our own campaigns. Um, so players out there in our campaigns, if we spoil anything for you, we're sorry, but also get over it. Um... <laughs> So uh, I I had actually really wanted to to kind of set up a scenario and kind of get your opinion on some stuff lost. Um, so uh, you know you have a decent idea of everything that's happening with my characters in Scold right now. Um, you're the one who helped me set up the you know the portals that uh, are trying to get it teleported to another dimension. Um, yes. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so for everybody else, uh, my players already know all the information I'm about to give. So that's why I'm okay telling all this. I'm not giving away any secrets. Um, so one of my players, or one of my characters, his name is Gadriel. That's the character's name. Um, he ran away from home when he was uh, in probably his early teens, late teen somewhere in there um after getting drunk one night and making a pact with a um unknown entity uh he's a warlock uh, so he made a pact with an unknown entity who um then got him to without him knowing kind of there's a blank space in his memory uh got him to slaughter his friend's entire family um he fled and that's all they knew up until recently. Uh, what was actually happening is that uh, when he fled, a Rakshasa stepped in and took his place. Um, so the Rakshasa works for, um, or is working with this demon named Sodkar, who is basically um, the embodiment of the Seven Deadly Sins is kind of how I've, I've created him to run. Um, and he's got these seven ringleaders under him, and each one of them is designated a deadly sin. So what's happening in Skold right now is the Rakshasa has set up the city so that there are five portals um, to Sodkar's plane called Etherin. And uh, the Rakshasa is going to try and take basically the whole city to Etherin so that, you know, the they can become part of the great circus that is Sodkar's domain. Um, and each portal is associated with uh, one of the different deadly sins, uh, but there's only five portals, so the two of them that aren't actually there. Uh, does um things my players haven't thought of yet uh so i have a few i have a few things that are coming up um with my players right now my players my characters um so my characters have come to realize that they're the type of both characters and players that instead of actually fixing things so instead of actually talking things out 
uh, they just say, oh, there's a problem. Let's go just ram our heads into it. So uh, a great example of this is uh, my paladin, Morig, his mother died. The, char the, the character's mother died, not the player's. Um, but the character's mother died. And instead of everybody sitting around, like trying to like talk with him about it, be like, hey, are you okay? Like talking things through. They said, your mother died. She was assassinated. Let's go. We're going to go catch these guys. We're going to go run after them. Like, and they just, instead of trying to fix the character's like actual trauma, they try and fix the actual, like the outside issue, but they never address the inside issue. Um, and what I've realized is that, uh, with the introduction of, um, uh, madness becoming very prevalent because they're dealing with, um, the uh, demons, um, very high level demons, uh, they are now getting madnesses and the characters are starting to go, like everybody's starting to look at each other going, wow, we are way more messed up than we thought we were. Yeah, it's like people, you know, it's like, um, one the first one that they went to was Wrath. And we have a character who's had madness for a long time that nobody else in the party knew about um, that she's started to enjoy killing people. And so when wrath hit her, someone bumped into her and she just started slaughtering people. And so the entire party went, that's not okay. <laughs> yeah, so like the, the madnesses are bringing out pieces of characters that the players themselves have known are there just the rest of the party didn't know were there um but the problem that i'm coming across is one um i'm kind of hitting the same character the same player or same yeah same characters every time because it's a wisdom check so characters that are good at wisdom saving throws are going to succeed most of the time and the ones that are bad are going to fail um so i have characters who are just disappearing to go do other things because the ma that's what the madness is encouraging them to um so A little bit. Um, I have one character who's separated. He's coming back, but like, my players are very good about. Hey, like I'm. If I need like if something is encouraging me to go break off, I'm going to come back. Like the mad. So the way that madness works for anybody that doesn't know, um, madness has three stages in D and D. Um, this is all based off of Out of the Abyss and the Dungeon Master's Guide. Um. The first one is short-term madness, which is uh, only a few minutes. The second time you get madness is long-term madness, and that lasts for a few hours. I think it's like uh, 1d10 times 5 hours or something like that. Um, and then the last one is indefinite madness. Ooh, and I now have characters who have two badness points. So I'm I'm trying to one figure out how to spread the love a little bit, um, because it it doesn't necessarily feel good that people just keep the same people keep disappearing. Um, like they've a lot of their motivations and stuff are coming to light, which is really nice. Um, uh, yeah, but th there's also the whole thing of my party is going mad. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, yeah, and you know, in like uh, my my paladin, uh, my my warlock has broken his old pact. Is now a celestial warlock. Uh, they both are know the spells that are required to fix it. Uh, but you don't lose madness levels. You just have them, and after you hit the third one, it resets. So, what? No. So if you get to the third one, the next time you take madness, you go back to short-term madness. What the spell does is it removes the effects. So the indefinite madness can be cured. Like the actual like. Um, you know, the greed that comes from the madness can be cured and taken away. Um, but the, your actual level of madness can't go away. Um, but the fact that my party is going mad is starting to, I think, wear on the party a little bit. Uh. Uh, I think it's more of the fact that it's just the madness is bringing out a lot of the dark in the party and so the sessions become dark which I've like my care my players know like I, I run a fairly dark campaign just in a lot of the themes that I'm dealing with. But the mood of the party is becoming dark. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, they all they all know and like from almost day one of this whole of my party being six persons, they've known there's a they're very dark themes um, but this is the first time that it's their characters that are having their darkness come to light really um, so that, yeah mm-hmm I do I do. Oh. No, I know, I know, um, and I appreciate that. Uh, My problem with with him is that the party is kind of like, ugh, it's him again. <laughs> yeah, um, and it may he he could be the one to kind of just sit down and be like, look, y'all need to figure your stuff out. Um. Yeah, I mean, I've I've kind of talked to my players a little bit about this, trying to encourage them to talk more about the stuff they have going on, and it's actually helped a lot. Um, but talking about the doom and gloom that's happening within the characters um, makes it doom and gloom. Uh, just so everybody's aware, I have to apologize. Uh, Lost has been muted for the entire beginning portion of this. Um... Oh, that'll make fun. a fun. That'll make a fun vod. Make a fun vod. Uh, <laughs> I've been talking this whole time. <laughs> sorry, y'all. Um, oh, I could. I could hear you. It's just um, the stream yeah. couldn't hear you. Cause I didn't unmute you on the on the stream software. That's my bad. Um, uh, well, everybody, welcome, lo uh, Lost Tourniquet. Um, but he's just been receiving 
my monologue apparently <laughs> <laughs> sorry actually quite fabulous uh, but but having him kind of sit down and i've talked to my players a little bit about it um just being like hey guys look you guys are getting a glimpse into madness mm-hmm your main goal is to go to the place where this madness is emanating from mm -hmm. so that you can kill the big bad like the madness okay. is coming from the portals but there are different there are different celestial beings that deal with with madness as well correct or healing or things of that nature yeah i asked I ask because, like, there are most celestials are like lawful good or like mm -hmm. good, right? Um, you could create a, a, some kind of being, whether it's celestial or not, is up to you. Um, hey, I mean, it could even be a fae mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> who is more concerned with the balance of nature and the balance of the world. And they could see this as a horrible imbalance like mm -hmm. because the, if this whole city is going to be moved mm -hmm. like you're literally moving planes around and shifting that and they could maybe just be like hey i have an idea um you owe me a favor i can cure you of your madness but you owe me a favor why because i'm fickle like that but also i want to restore the balance and then yeah. have his favor be something not <laughs> not quite like not quite like evil yeah but just like questionable like yeah hmm. i mean i'm like, not it's it's not because like like i said like they know the spells to remove the effects of the madness right but that also requires them to use them yeah and i mean they have been they have been using them. Uh, in fact, the only reason why my ranger was even a part of this last fight that almost TPK'd the party, and would have TPK'd the party, uh, might still TPK the party because it's not done yet, um, is because they, they cured her of a long-term madness. Okay. Um, hmm. but, but bringing in... One, you just gave me an idea to... I've been trying to... There's a villain that I've been trying to create in my head, and I really like that. So um, I will probably be be using that. Um, I got you. Yeah, yeah that fits really <laughs> well, well into the role that I was I was trying to create. Um, like a fickle, fickle character. Yeah. So, for example, that this character is doing. I imagine it to be a guy. I don't know why. I just think it's more entertaining that way. Um, but like they take a favor and he's doing a good deed, right? Like he's permanently removing madness from a character or two, mm -hmm. like not the whole party, just like a single character or two. And that would be considered a good, in fact, likely a lawful good act. Yeah. And so he's, he's concerned about balance, right? So in return of like of that, he gets a favor from them. And naturally, his favor is going to be not good. Yeah. It is going to be evil. In fact, lawful evil. Or something along yeah. those lines where it's like, oh, oh, okay. You want me to instead go and destroy this family or instead go and, you know, it's something, kill. Something that makes the paladin go, wait. <laughs> yeah, or like, uh, kill a celestial kill mm -hmm. a particular celestial being that's driving this person nuts or you know whatever the case may be like that would be really i think that'd be really interesting yeah i've i think i i've got some pretty good ideas of where to go with that um and by the way sorry players of his i love you i really do i really do love you this is fine this is fine she's <laughs> She's the real mastermind between, behind all the twisted, tormented things you guys go through. Um, but yeah, I guess I guess it's just uh, looking to 
bring bring the spirits back up like i just feel like every it's almost like every character is starting to get depressed yeah um and trying to find a way to combat that mm -hmm. uh is is what i'm really struggling with um and that's a challenge that i think a lot of a lot of gms really face um because there are points in whether it's like a character arc or if it's not even a character arc if it's just your overarching plot line that you're working with um even if it's not as dark like parties are still going to go through ruts mm -hmm. where they're just like okay we have to do this or you know they get their their pcs get really depressed about it um I know one of the things that I like to do in the midst of that is like in, in, in a, instead of adding a character that's very fickle or devious or funny or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. give them, give them like a one shot adventure within the city. That's like random as hell, but super, super funny. So for example, um, have somebody meet this person who has to carry a duck of doom what is a duck of doom you don't know but they can't put the duck of doom down until they're cured and so they have to go on this like wild ass like adventure and the solution is stupid simple but it's not like they have to go through this like complex set of things in order to arrive at this answer which is like put down the duck of doom you're fine <laughs> or like something really yeah. really dumb where yeah. it's just like wait what I've, and that's I've... Oh, go ahead. So I've actually tried to do something like that before. Okay. Um, how did how did that work? They completely ignored it. Oh. Because they're very shit. they're very story driven. Like they want to progress yeah. with the story. Um. Yeah. The I I created a uh, little like one shot, two shot like side quest for them where uh, a guy who visited their tavern all the time um he his wife was like he have you heard the song seven drunken nights it's an irish song not. called seven drunken nights um the, the first the first oh, line is I, I came home on a monday night as drunk as drunk could be uh, there was a horse beside the door where my old horse should be Yes, yes, uh, yes. I, I do remember that song. I think you actually it, showed me the song. Yes. Yeah, and it, it kind of slowly progresses to um, I came home on a Sunday night as drunk as drunk could be, and there was a. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was. It, it's basically he walks in on them, on his wife cheating on him, but he's so drunk, and his wife's like, no, that was a whistle. Like, no, that was. <laughs> like, um, it's. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's, but I create, I created an entire little one shot about, you know, a guy whose wife was cheating on him, but it was, um, I, I've been trying to throw Rakshasas into, at my characters for ages because I love Rakshasas, um, and this was going to be a Rakshasa, um, but like it could have been a changeling or anything like that, but the whole thing was that his wife literally thought that it was him mm -hmm. the whole time and that this demon or whatever has been manipulating her yeah um and but like the whole thing of just the seven drunken nights like oh no she she didn't know what was happening um <laughs> oh my gosh oh man but yeah you know i'm just just trying to lighten the mood with something like that and I've, I've tried doing things that are a little bit more um light-hearted like that little one shot but they kind of go no like we've got th we've got things we need to do mm -hmm. and i appreciate that i love the fact that my characters are like we need to get stuff done right uh, but they also are that type of people to a detriment to the, right. the actual characters because they are like we need to get stuff done 
that's how we fix things is getting stuff done and not they don't actually end up talking about the things that are wrong right uh, and right. and they've had a few heart to hearts that have been um that have been really good for them but yeah it's just i've i've got a, one suicidal character i've got one character who um is just constantly being hit by madness just to verify it's it's the character not the person correct it is the character for the group okay yeah just it is it is the characters that are that are going through this um one of my characters is suicidal um he's like he's trying to get his revenge and kind of die doing it um so yeah the whole mood of the party is just so i have an idea to okay combat that yeah um your party has to sleep sometime right Mm-hmm. great shared dream oh where the like there are two creatures at work one could be like a demon trying to get them to whatever and the other one could be like the opposite or it could just be they all had this really weird effing dream and you have no idea why yeah like, they all wake up they're like did you did that with the whistle like <laughs> you know what i mean yeah like they all they all wake up and like one person looks at their nightstand and there's a freaking whistle of the you know they're like what just happened and nobody wants to talk about it because they all had this shared dream of them going through this adventure together Mm -hmm. and the cool part about having a shared dream is that there are nuances that can be different for each character that only that character can see because it's a dream yeah unless you have somebody who can't actually dream like one of my one of my pcs he he literally cannot dream like that's part of his shtick Mm. um he can have visions Mm -hmm. but he can't dream um, Interesting. Mhm. Mhm. Or or it's characters hard. or uh, like warforged warforged who don't sleep. Yep. Uh, I don't know if you have any characters like that, but um, that could be a way to force them to be like, no, you're actually going on this thing. Like this is actually going to happen, whether you like it or not. Yeah, honestly. Why? It's... Because I'm the DM. That's why. <laughs> GM, I'm DM. in charge. I'm in charge. <laughs> It's actually amazing that I haven't done that. I've I've done something kind of like that to them before, and I remember. Yeah, the Kobold Dungeon that just it it was so irritating for them. Like I was over here thinking it'd be kind of fun, and no, God, they hated it. Okay, uh, the traps that we set though. Like, oh, they were very inventive, but they were they also were... very irritating. Yes, they were. They I personally think they were awesome. I can understand as a party member going through that how annoying as hell it would be. But yeah. I, I had so much fun helping you with that. Oh, creating that dungeon was so much fun. Actually, having them run it, I was like, there was there were points that I was like, all right, like that, this is cool. Uh, but there were there were points like the piston room. God, they they, they wanted to murder me. Okay, so, like, the piston room was literally, like, you had, if you walked over this trap, you'd have a piston come from one side, you keep going, it comes from the other side, it just different directions every time you'd go forward, and it was, like, you couldn't predict it if you if you didn't check for traps, or you yeah. weren't looking, or whatever the case may be. And so, from what I remember, like, they hit almost every one, right? Yeah, so, they, they would check for traps, but... Um my rogue didn't um, didn't realize that he could try and disarm the traps. Oh, no. So they would find it and they would try and jump over it. And I'd be like, all right, like it's a small room. There's like a wire that you guys can see to do this. And so they would try and jump over it and I'd have them roll a dex check and it wouldn't be hard. It would just be an acrobatics check. Well, <laughs> my warlock was rolling garbage. <laughs> I got oh, no. hit by like four of them. <laughs> oh 
Oh no. Oh no, no, no. In fact, no. him getting hit by one of them is what caused the first, like, one of the pistons to actually um, disarm because he had armor of Agathis on. So when the piston hit him, it did cold damage to the piston. <laughs> so I had the piston freeze. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh. That's cool. But, like, that, that stuff is really fun. When when you're talking about it, or when right. you're like thinking, dreaming it up, but they, when the party has to check every five feet for a trap, right? But I think this would be more of a we're not going to check every five feet for a trap. This is more of a you know, like why are we here, and what are we doing, and I guess we're going to help this lady now, or I guess yeah. we're going to help chicken that's talking to me about its golden eggs that were stolen doesn't make any sense it's a dream it's not supposed to make sense <laughs> i have i actually have some just, i'm starting to dream up some some fun things that i could throw at my party for this um but one of the things i do want to mention that i've at least noticed and maybe you have too um and it like just with how dark my campaign is, I think that it's more prevalent. Um, but you know, there's you were talking about kind of the ebb and flow that every party has, um, and what I've kind of noticed is that that ebb and flow really revolves around where they are in the arc. Yeah. Um, you know, at the very beginning, they're very gung ho. They're ready to go. They're ready to get the stuff done. And then they start going and doing the things that they're, and that's a, that's kind of the downhill. And mm -hmm. then when they finish, they're like, yeah, guys, we did it. We saved, we saved the, this town. We, um, you know, saved the world. We did whatever it is we were trying to do. And there's now this back up. And, um, I think, I think part of the issue right now is that, uh, they're in a really deep rut because the darkness that they're fighting is really within themselves. Um, but I think I'm hoping by the end of this arc, it's like a, because they've been forced to deal with it, it'll start to come back up. Um, mm. So I don't know. That's, that's kind of a hope that I have. Right. And I think, I think, I guess the the question that the party needs to ask themselves is if they know they're going to be going into battle on to to, to fight this demon to destroy mm -hmm. it on his plane. So it's his realm. Yeah. So he's got all he's got all the shit or mm -hmm. excuse me all all the stuff right. Um, do they want to have to deal with madness on top of that? Because me as a player. Even, even as a player character, no matter who I am as a player character, unless I have an intelligence below six, uh -huh. I'm going to think, mm, maybe maybe that's not such a good idea. Because I can guarantee if I'm if I'm in a realm of demons, like, oh, yeah. mad, you... ma madness is going to be prevalent there. Yeah. Like, oh, maybe this isn't a wise idea. Like, uh, by the same token... Uh, if they have spells that can get rid of the effects of it, they may not think it's that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. And it might not be that big of a deal until the final battle and suddenly you have people turning on each other and you have people um, right at the apex of the fight not dealing the final blow and killing members of the party. Yeah. I, I've, I've already had a few conversations with people that have gone, you know, if the madness keeps getting at me, I think I think I'm just gonna I think my character will just snap. Yeah. Um, which I love about my I love about my my players is that they're all very aware of the mental states of their characters and the yeah. wear and tear that things like dying, about receiving repeated madness in a short like different madnesses in a short period of time, um, like the wear and tear that'll have on someone's mental state. Um, if, whether or not they're they're healed from it or brought back, um, I I love that about my my characters, um, 
but we need some wins. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And they and they just picked a fight with a guy that I I put in there to be so scary that they shouldn't fight him. Uh <laughs> But naturally, they view it as a challenge, and they should yeah. fight him. Because yeah. that's how that works. Yep. Uh, mainly because one of them was... Yeah, anyways. Um, so, party dynamics. Party dynamics, I love it. Um, so, uh, yeah, just, just trying to, to figure that out. Um, you know, a way of kind of uplifting spirits in a victory format. Um, you know, it's interesting that you say that. And I only say that because my party is the exact opposite where hmm. they are eager to take on side quests. Like for them, oh. that's not a big deal. Yeah. Well, let me, let me rephrase that. Like half the party is like, cool, let's go do this thing. Yeah. And the other half of the party is like, maybe we should progress the story. Like that might be a good idea. Um, but it's a lot more whimsical. Yeah. And so, like, I know I want to eventually have people invested to the point where uh, when they start getting into a lot of the dark parts of the story, they're going to want to persevere through that and emerge on the other side and stay focused. Mm -hmm. But I have the feeling that if I were to throw any side quest at them, that's funny. Oh, yeah, they'd want to do it. They jump on it instantly like yeah. they don't even get a second thought they're like let's go um yeah. Where, whereas my characters are like yeah let's deal with the dark stuff but one of the things i think is really cool is your characters um have really effective communication uh, between each other it seems like that they that they talk more about um what their plans are and and how to move forward and they move forward yeah, um, they're okay. they're very good at overarching plans, um, right. like talking about you know where are we going, what does everybody want, like what is everybody's desires right now to get done. Um, they for the first time ever sat down and were like, hey, let's plan out how we're going to deal with this combat. Like let's set a trap. It was the first time they've ever done it. It didn't go well. Um, was it for the Rakshasa? It was for the Rakshasa fight. So oh, they, I remember <laughs> that. That was rough. They, Even for me, that was rough. They, they went and they put down like four or five glyph of warding set to explode. And like half the party was standing in the room with the Rakshasa. Who the with the glyphs in the middle and like this is like a little 20 by 20 room and the thing or 10 by 10 room something like that 20 by 20 and it's got a 20 foot radius mm -hmm. as they're standing in the bar and glyph of warding they cast glyph of warding at fifth level for all of these oh no well rakshasas are immune to spells of sixth level and lower which sucks because like they would have had such it would have been so awesome. I know. I'm like it. It was such a good plan. But I'm but, sitting over here going, guys, I, I really wish that I could just smile and nod and go, yeah, this is gonna go great. Like I'm so proud of you guys. But instead, they blew up all but two members of the party down to about half health before this big fight. And the bad guy didn't take any damage. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it it was a it was a rough one. Um, they don't do much planning on what to do next. Uh, okay. and, and so they're yeah, they don't so much talk about like oh, the plans in the moment. Um. But it's in the moments of breathers that they go, all right, where are we at in our overarching plans? Let's pow wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, they're, they're pretty good about, you know, they're making their way. They've kind of already set out how they want to go through the portals. They didn't bother to do any research 
into like really what is going on around the portals. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I, I still gave hints for most of them. Right. But they have they have two portals that they've never they don't really know the locations of. They don't know oh, what what the sin that's tied to it is. Um, interesting. Like the the first three that they've been to, they like the first one was running a fighting ring, the second one was a strip club, and the third one was um, was a restaurant that'd been overcharging for food. <laughs> Jeez, I wonder what those are. Yeah. Oh. I... <laughs> yeah. yeah it's real awesome. tinkers. Um, that's really interesting. Like, part of me is so proud that, like, that, like some of the ideas that we've talked about, you're just like the way you you integrate it into the city. Yeah, was very clever. Yeah, very clever. But and they still haven't been able to find that yet. Uh, yeah, they've. Well, it's more that there's a portion of the city that they've never been to. Like, they know the the general whereabouts of where it would be. Right, but they like they've never been there. Right. Um. So they don't know exactly what's happening in those portions of the city. Um. So we're, I'm interested to see see how the rest of this arc plays out. With with yeah. What you could do is—is is there like a leader of the city or like a governor or the emperor? They've already spoken with the emperor. What is the emperor like? Um, the emperor is actually on their side. Um, okay. the emperor is very overwhelmed right now. Yep. Just simply because he's had a fighting ring and random bloodbaths happening in the market district. Uh, okay. Meanwhile, these giant orgies have been popping up in another district and I, he's kind of trying to deal with the actual the fallout, fallout. Yeah. yeah and he's kind of tasked the party to go out and deal with the actual causes you know one of the things he could ask the party to do is to help with a festival or something to try to help the city because if the city is finding out that all these things are happening, or if it knows that all these things are happening in the news or the Gazette or whatever yeah. it has as its form of media, um, he, any any person in, in that kind of leadership position would want to offset that kind of darkness with something that's entertaining and something that will help bring up the morale of his people. Of yeah. People. So what you could do is potentially set up a thing where he asks for their help like hey i know that you're trying to help take down these different groups i had one of my spies or something tell me that like we're planning this festival and this group is going to be present hmm. it's very important that this festival goes off without a hitch and that people enjoy themselves yeah can I'm... you like go and and Try to blend into the festival as much as you can. Become part of the festival as much as you can, but keep an eye out and see if these people actually show. Mm -hmm. So that way it ties them into the plot. Like, oh, okay, um, there is the potential to have main characters in the overarching plot be present. So we want to be there. Mm -hmm. But it's a festival. Like, if you're trying to blend into a festival, what are you going to do? Drink? Play games? Uh, yeah. Dance? Like join that part of the festivities because if you don't you kind of look like a weirdo stalker and they can get thrown in prison or something like if they're just like strolling about yeah i mean so granted, whether... the last the last time they talked to the emperor was before one of my characters went on a killing spree Ooh. that could also be another part of it yeah part of reparations yeah i'm so I'm I'm actually kind of thinking of it as a um, like when when you finish like once mm -hmm. the taint is removed like um, but the question is is whether or not my my players are gonna go this is a side quest 
let's because scold scold wasn't even their main objective by coming right. to this half of the world so it's like a are are they gonna stay like would they even agree to stay for a festival or would they just say well we'll never come back to scold that's fine well if they're planning on closing the portals and it's happening mid mid time so they're still looking out for those other portals or those other people mm -hmm. or those other places um that would give them the drive to stay if they yeah. know that those people are going to be present or if you know they had spies say hey listen there's a there's a guy who's going to be present or there's a girl who's going to be present and she knows the location to one of the portals however she she's like a changeling or something so she changes how she looks frequently mm -hmm. so they have to go find this person in a festival setting and then they can interrogate her and be like where is where is this portal and whether they get that information or not is obviously up to you yeah um but i think if they're around things that are more lighthearted, and even you describing some of those lighthearted things can sometimes help like, mm -hmm. you know, like you talk about a, a little girl, like trying to get her, her dad to like play this game so she can win this teddy bear and he can't shoot an arrow to save his freaking life. Oh, if only we knew a ranger who, that would, who could do it. Yeah. Who could do this. Or like you could describe this scene and they could be like, yeah, that's nice. Nobody cares. Mm -hmm. But if you describe different elements of that lightheartedness it helps yeah. remind player characters like oh yeah there are good things in the yeah. world there there are th like this is what we're fighting for like this is why exactly. we're doing the stuff that um okay i like that and it, i think i think that um there's a lot of variety in how i can do that so i'm uh yeah play to your play to your player characters not like weaknesses, but soft spots. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like one character you mentioned, he, he lost his family mm -hmm. or they thought that he died or something like that. Having see, having him see a family reunion where yeah. like, I they mean, have this moment, you know? So, so he actually has a little sister that he's never met. Uh, oh, interesting. Huh. That, that, his little sister grew up with the Rakshasa as her brother. Oh shit. That's right. I do remember that. Wow. Um, like the, the, there's, there's definitely family reunion that needs to happen. Um, that I'm hoping will happen and is, is a force for them to not burn bridges with the city. Um, So, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm hoping because they also have taught, talked about um, building another bar in 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 Skold. Um, even even though uh, my bard, who's kind of the driving force for the the bar, the Waystone Inn, um, really hates Skold. <laughs> he really hates it. He is rolled awful the entire. We've been in Scold for, I think, like in real life time, probably four months. Holy crap. You uh, guys meet every week. Yeah, okay. well, maybe not four months, but two two months, probably. And for the okay. last two months, he's rolled just complete and utter garbage. And he's like, I just, he, he feels so useless because... The things that he rolls really well on are things that I either don't matter or things that I'm like, like yeah, you rolled really well, but also you didn't like roll amazing. Right. It's like, yeah, you're, uh, so he's a bard and I'm like, you're in one, literally the trade capital of the world. Yeah. This should be his, this should be his pie. Like, yeah. But also he's walking up and going, Hey, I'm the best bard ever. And playing music, oh, no. and the people are like, "Well, I've heard better," because he rolls a ten, which is still like a twenty-something. 
but it's the trade capital of the world. Like, the very wealthy will have heard literally some of the best musicians in the world. Like, oh, they're all level 10, I think, right now. Like, okay. They've probably heard a level 20 bard before. <laughs> um, rough. That's yeah. rough. And, like, if he rolled better, like, even a little bit better, I think there was one roll that I was like, all right, the DC on this would be 30 for him to, like, because he was trying to convince someone to take him as a patron. Um, and the the family of Gadriel's family to take him as a patron uh, or as yeah to be his patron um, and so he just starts playing and I think he I think he got a 26 and my DC on it was a 30 but he rolled like a 10 so I'm like literally like you could have done this mm-hmm. so it's interesting that you say that because in my wilderness, um, D, uh, it, like it's officially like a wilderness DM board, mm -hmm. whatever the heck it's called, yeah. the screen, privacy screens. Um, they, it goes through like what is easy, moderate, difficult, and like extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. And it, it, for different, oh, overcoming different obstacles and things like that. Um, and moderate is 15. Yeah. Oh, no. I... Difficult, difficult is 20. And so, like, I'm hearing you saying, like, okay, the DC's 30, and I'm like, this is impossible. Yeah. Like... It's, it's a, I mean, he's he's trying to convince people that he's the best bard in the world to people who have heard the best bards in the world. It's nearly impossible. Like, you have to outdo a role that one of the best bards in the world could pull off. He casts friends. <laughs> well, he already gets advantage on performance checks. That's the crazy part. <laughs> that's that's, I feel so bad for your poor oh, heart. I like, know. Throw him a bone. The, the worst part is, is there was there was a fight. It was the wrath fight. Uh, when he finally rolls a nat twenty in the fight for inflict wounds, and he was like, "Yes," and I was like. Uh, I was like, nope, it's not a 20. Because what? they made deal with the hags. And I was going to use it as an opportunity to do that. And he's like, you got to be kidding me. I'm like, you know what? You're right. I'll, I'm not going to do it for this. Well, the next round, he rolled another nat 20 for inflict wounds. And I was like, I'm doing it this time. Like, I gave you your once... But I already kind of let this the cat out of the bag as to what this huge secret I'd been holding on to is about yeah. what um, they gave to the hag of the future. Yep. Um, so with that nat 20, I was like, I'm taking this one. It's actually a nat 1, and you... Things... Hurt yourself. Yeah. Well, I, I don't run nat 1s as, like, you, you hit yourself, but, like, uh, you miss. And he's like... Everyone in the party was like, wait a second, what the hell is happening? Why is David now saying that this role is not a nat 20, it's a 1? Like, um, so, for those of you that don't know, um, my players decided that it was a good idea to uh, to make a deal with three hags named Past, Present, and Future. And so, each member of the party had to give up something to past, present, or future. Well, my bard decided that he would take the bullet for two people, including himself, and give something to each of the three of them. So members of my party all lost something about their past or something about their present, which they were changed into uh, the, the green hag, or the hag... Uh, the hag race. There's a new like transit. Okay. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, and I saw that and I was like, oh, this is perfect. So they're they're turning into that. Um, and then lastly, the future was I get three of their I get three of their dice rolls. I get to decide what they are. 
somewhere in the future, I am taking one of your dice rolls, or taking three of your dice rolls. So we've all learned that whiskey is a very, very unique, unique, sadistic, unique DM. Sadistic. No, I'm 100% sadistic. Uh, it makes it it makes it different and challenging in a whole new yeah way. I, and now now my players have this kind of looming threat over them of like i can take a death save i can literally the hags could kill one of my characters uh, but the hags could also do something to help them so it's this weird balance of you know, what are they doing? Is what they're doing in line with what the hags want? And trying to think of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to use this as a kind of, hey, heads look, up. Heads up. This is what it is. Um, but my poor bard, he's the one that had to take the bullet on it. Hey, you know what? Honestly, it could have been a lot worse. Could have been a lot worse. Yeah. I thought, I thought that taking a second nat 20 in a row wasn't too bad. But, like, here's the deal. Like, you turned it into a nat one. Your nat ones, they miss. Yeah. If one of my players rolls a nat one, there's not only, like, them missing, but they end up, like, something ends up either happening to them or they do something. Do you, you run the critical that failure is, table? That That is, no, I it's my own. Oh, table, okay. Basically. But, yes, that is detrimental to the party. So, for example, like... This did not happen, mm -hmm. right? But let's say um, I had my uh, monk roll to hit a goblin, and there was another person, like whether they're a villager or another party member, um, nearby within a five-foot radius. Mm -hmm. If he rolls a nat one, he's going to totally miss the goblin, but he's going to hit his friend or he's going to hit the villager. Yeah. yeah. If they're within that five foot radius and he's facing them. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, that makes oh, sense. Goblin saw it coming because he's trained. Like he knows how to fight. Yeah. The villager didn't Not have Not so a much. Too. Yeah. yeah so he didn't duck in time and he just took four points of damage and he's incapacitated. Yeah. And they're like, oh shit. And I'm like, yeah, that's what happens when you're rolling out one. <laughs> like, so you're very kind when you want to change things to it now. I'm like, no, no, no. Yeah. no. Like, you're going to roll an athletics check, you roll an at one, you trip, fall, and take one before damage. Why? Because you did. Like, <laughs> and they're I'll, like, what? I'll do. I'll throw those in there on occasion. Like, uh, you rolled a nat one, and there's someone literally directly on the other side of the creature or something like that. Or um, you roll a nat one is trying to jump over a ravine on an acrobatics check. You're falling in the damn ravine. Um, mm -hmm. But... Uh, we are actually out of time. Oh my gosh, we are. Wow. Yeah. Uh, guys, I hope everybody listening has enjoyed listening to our, D our GM talk. Uh, this, is, this is very much what Lost and I's normal back and forths look like whenever we're brainstorming or needing help from each other uh, on player issues or things like that. Um, and those conversations are what birthed this podcast um so uh if you guys want to see more versions of the podcast like this let us know um mm -hmm. lord knows that we have enough of these conversations that we could probably sit down every two weeks and just have these conversations <laughs> um but uh in the meantime y'all Thank you for joining us for this episode of the GM's Lost Whiskey. Um, if you're watching us live on Twitch, make sure you hit that follow button um, so you'll know when we go live. Um, our live schedule is going to be changing coming up here pretty soon, um, and it's very possible that we may be even not going live here on in the future. Uh, but we, um, whether or not we end up going live, uh, we'll keep everybody in the loop. Um, uh, but... If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Um, it really helps us out. Um, and be sure to check out um, some of our other videos. We're looking to start posting some other videos on the channel. Um, things like uh, Rate My Backstory, um, doing uh, builds based off of book characters. So 
Um, so we've been talking about like Bilbo Baggins or Aragorn or um, characters from Brandon Sanderson books. Uh, just kind of kind of reaching into all areas of that the medieval fantasy genre um, and pulling some characters from that. So if you guys have recommendations for who you would like to see us do for that, um, please let us know. Uh, but be sure you go check out the other videos on our channel um, as we get those up, get caught up on the podcast. Uh, for sure. And um, one of the things that uh, I know really helps us too is, you know, if you want to leave a, a review or if you have questions yourselves or comments yourselves, or you're like, hey, I have a character idea or I have a, a plot idea or a story idea, could you guys review it and tell us what you think or what your thoughts are? Um, you're more than welcome to do that. We we love it when people do. Mm -hmm. uh, you can send that to our email. It is the GM's Lost Whiskey at gmail.com. Yep. And um, if you have questions or want to leave a comment on the VOD, um, shoot us an email uh, at, even when it comes to like, hey, or, or, or post in, in the Twitch chat like, hey, Lost's mic is muted. Like, Yeah, thank you very much for that. <laughs> Like, like that, that helps us out a lot. It would have it been a very different, very different live stream. <laughs> it's, oh my, it would have been a very different VOD. Um, yes, that's for sure. Um, but yes, so definitely do that. And if you'd like to support our show, visit our Patreon at uh, patreon.com backslash GM's Lost Whiskey. Um, yeah. yeah. Be sure be sure to leave a comment down on the VOD. Um, and guys, I'm Whiskey. And that I'm lost. Have a drink for me, y'all. And don't stop rolling. God bless y'all. Peace. Peace.